Hey you guys, it's Amy and I am going to record you this video to show you how I use Ruby, okay? So I'm going to show you three things. I'm going to show you how you sign up for Ruby. I'm going to show you the Ruby app and I'm going to show you the Ruby training diary, which is part of the Ruby website once you have an account. Um, and I'm going to, I want to tell you before I get started that um, I'm recording this in May of 2020. I'm using Ruby a lot because it's part of the Iron Man VR series. I'm really enjoying it. But one of the reasons I don't do videos like this very often is A, this is not my expertise, technical um, how-to videos. And two, because this is a quickly changing app. And honestly, you if you watch this a month from now, some of this data could really be out of date. So when you watch this, if there's stuff that's wrong, just know that I told you. Okay, now I'm going to share my screen and you should see, you should see the Ruby website. Okay, so this is the Ruby website where you are going to sign up for Ruby, right? This is not, this is not anything overly complicated. You hit the big try it free. As of this time, Ruby says they have a 14 day free trial. Um, and then you pick your device that you're going to use for Ruby. So it's a different thing. There's a difference between the operating system you use and the type of software that you run. So you have to select if it's Mac, Apple TV, iOS, so on and so forth. You pick your device and you do that. Now I already, let me move me out of the way, I already have an account. So up in the upper right, you can see that I have my little logo. There is a way to put your name there. I truthfully have not figured out how to do this. We're going to come back to this in a second because you set up your account and then you download the app and then you attach your trainer. Okay. So I am going to try and share with you now the Ruby app. Let's see how we do this. Share screen, Ruby AR. Okay. So you should now see my Ruby screen, okay? I use Ruby with a smart trainer connected with Bluetooth. It, for me, it was plug and play. You do not need a smart trainer to use Ruby, but I have not set it up personally with anything else, and so I'm not gonna try and tell you how. So Ruby has connected to, let's see if I can show you my sensors. Um, oh wait, hold on, that was wrong. I'm going to show you my sensors. Ruby is connected to my Wahoo Kicker. It does not have my speed. I do not have a chest strap that I'm using riding my bike, and it did not see my cadence sensor because it just didn't. Okay, so I only have it connected to my Wahoo Kicker. Okay. Um, Ruby is not doing workouts. Ruby is courses and Ruby does control your trainer, but not the same way trainer road does. Ruby controls it. This is my theory. Okay. By presenting the grade of the route that you're doing and by calculating just through math, how fast you would be moving over that course. So you are going to shift your gears while you ride in Ruby and it's like you are riding on real terrain. Okay. When you go into Ruby and when you're doing Ruby, you pick a course, okay? So mine is set up from this weekend when I rode Ironman 5150 Boulder, which was presented by Ironman, okay? You can change it, that's how you change it. This is where all of the courses are. One of the things, or routes, I'm sorry, I should say routes. One of the things that's interesting about Ruby is that anybody can upload a route to Ruby. I have not done this, but anybody can do it. You can upload an AR route with your video even, I believe, okay? So there are thousands of routes in Ruby. Not very many are AR because that's the newest thing. AR is where you see your little avatar and so on and so forth, but these are all these routes. It is a little bit confusing because now with the new partnership with Iron Man, here are the Iron Man routes that have been created. There's an Iron Man section that have been created for the virtual racing. This is not all of the Ironman routes that are on Ruby. In the upper left hand corner you've got this little search class and if you type in the name of an Ironman course like Augusta it will pull up other routes like now you should see that there's Augusta 70.3, a bunch of different options for Augusta routes that were uploaded by people. 
If I type in Lake Placid, let's see what happens. Right, Iron Man Lake Placid, Iron Man Lake Placid. There's a bunch of these. So these are there. They're not AR courses, but they are the roots. And people put the years on them because roots do change from year to year. And you can find thousands of courses. The AR courses are very cool because they have video and they have avatars. Some of them have video and you just proceed along the bottom. Those are the non-AR courses and you see the picture change, but you don't see yourself. And then the AR courses are where you see, which stands for augmented reality. You see the course and you see your avatar and all the avatars of the other people around you. You can pass and be passed during the route. Okay, so um, I'm gonna give you a couple tips um, for using Iron Man AR that I have learned. You will see here that it says that um, this is the route that I'm riding on the upper left hand side says that I have downloaded the video. I download the video in advance so that when I'm riding the route, it is playing it locally from my computer, okay? And then it's not, it doesn't stream quite as much. I find Ruby to be a resource hog on this laptop, so it is the only thing I run when I'm using it, and I download the video in advance so that I'm not streaming as much. If you wanna change the route, you hit select this button. You can run any of their routes as a training ride, which just means it's you. You can stop, start, pause at any time, or as a race, okay? So a race just is a difference in how they are recording it. You can compete with um, anybody who happens to be riding at that time. You earn points for the Ruby challenges. Um, all of the Ironman VR races need to be run as races for credit in the challenger division. Um, Ruby does do races where they have prizes, um, so that would also be a race. When you are running it in a race, you will be in there with anybody who happens to be running it at the same time, or you can create your own races um, and set them up private with your friends. And Ironman does do races, pro races for the men and the women over their weekends and you can join them and race at the same time, okay? If you want to, if you have friends that are using Ruby, you can also set up people as virtual partners. Okay, so you can go in and race or if you see on the lower left here, you can watch. It says there are two live racers in the Ironman 5150 Arizona. Let's see if we can find them. So I hit watch and let's see what happens. I have done this a couple times when I've already done my workout or a bike workout is not on my to-do list. And then I watch the races. Okay, so there are two riders on here right now. This is what Ruby looks like when you ride it. Um, I am watching, I am not this person, but it looks the same. Um, so whoever this is, Javier, um, he is right here, 12 miles and 27 into the course. I can switch and see this other person whose avatar's name is Honey, and there it is. You can see that it's video and it's playing, and you can see on the bottom where they are in the course. The Ruby Roots, um, so Arizona is a pretty flat course. It's all yellow, but they are color-coded. Yellow is pretty flat, orange and red are very steep, and green is downhill. You have to pedal all the time at Ruby, except for when it's downhill and it's green, at which time you can actually stop pedaling and your avatar will continue to move forward a little bit. It will show you, it shows you at the top here, he's producing, according to his trainer, 174 watts. Um, uh, maybe that's what that means. 92 is his cadence, his cadence sensor is picking up, his speed is 16.1 miles, and this is his watts per kilo, 1.9 watts per kilo, which is reasonable. You do sometimes see some absolutely insane numbers produced in, Ravi, in, in Ruby. Okay, so that's what Ruby looks like. I am, oh, let's see if I can see the map. This is the other way you can look at it, which is just a map, so you can see where you are. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and quit. Okay, so we're back to the screen here of the routes. Once you complete a Ruby race, you will then have that data in your training diary. Okay, let me see if I can show you the training diary. You should now be back to, oh, bring your shared window to the front. Let me do new share, back to this one. You should now see my Ruby desktop, uh, Ruby website, okay. This is my Ruby profile, okay. If I click here and go to my dashboard, it will show you my information, okay. 
And this is where your data is stored for Ruby. And it, it was confusing to me because it's not a part of the app, it's part of the website. So then though, you've got your information, your training diary. Um, you can do some research on roots, which I have not done. Um, Ruby has classifications, beginner, elite, legend, which you get by doing challenges and accumulating points. Um, but what I'm gonna show you right now is the training diary, okay? So this is the um, main page and it shows you the different things that you have done, right? And if I select one of these, these routes, this is 5150 that I just did this past weekend. So this is Ruby, this is Arizona 5150, it's pulling up the data. Um, you can see that it's having a little trouble pulling the data. That is because Ruby is running in the background. Ruby, like I said, is a, a resource hog. I'm gonna go ahead and shut the actual app of Ruby off because that should make things run a little better. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Bring my shared window to the front. Okay, now it should be a little bit better because Ruby should not be running. Is Ruby still running? Yeah. Um, okay, so this is Arizona 5150. Shows you a little map. It shows you the altitude overall. It shows you what my power and speed showed. Um, this is what I wanted to show you. This is where you set up sharing your training here about um, one page down on the right side. So you can connect it to Strava, Training Peaks, Under Armour, Run Keeper, Ride, and Email. One that's not listed here that does exist is I have Ruby directly connected to Ironman VR, which is what I use Ruby for. Shows you your breakdown in your zones. They use a seven zone scale. I have no idea what that's all about. Here are your comments. You can make friends on Ruby, like so you can connect to your friends and you can comment. That's never happened with me. Um, and you can leave notes. Fun thing that they do down here at the bottom, they have a little thing that says that I have earned 6.99 hamburgers. <laughs> uh, and how far I've run total and your total ascent compared to an Everesting. Okay, so this is where you see that your data is sent and it stores all of your data. It also just sends it straight through. So mine goes right to Training Peaks and right to Strava, okay? And that, my friends, is how I use Ruby. Let's stop the share. So I just told you a couple things. I told you how you sign up for Ruby. Um, right now they have a 14 day free trial and then I think I paid $70 for the year. Uh, there are discounts out there. You can look for them. Um, I took you on a tour of the Ruby app. I want to tell you that Ruby does update a lot. Um, you can expect that, at least in my experience, Ruby is coming up with an update every like couple weeks at least. Um, Ruby is a newer software. It is made by software engineers in Czechoslovakia. I would want to give you realistic expectations that they are very, very nice people and they try and help. There's definitely been a language barrier when I reach out to Ruby, just the way it is. Um, and I showed you the training diary, which is where they keep your data for Ruby. So that's how I use Ruby. Uh, let me know if you use Ruby and what experiences you have with Ruby. I'd love to know. Thanks for watching so much. Have a great day.